Hey, thanks for joining. My name is AJ Me. I am a business intelligence technology specialist for Microsoft. And I wanted to walk you through a quick demo of a pretty new options, a pretty cutting edge option for us uh, to be able to wire Microsoft BI tools, in particular Power BI, our, our self-service arsenal of, of, of wares, and to point that against SAP. And if, and if you know anything about the topic, you may know that um, conventional approaches to accessing SAP data through Microsoft tools may require a little bit of infrastructure, whether it be the form of integration services packages, um, third-party adopters. Um, you'll find that if you're in Power BI for the most part, you're not going to see a tier one adopter that says go at SAP data in BW, for instance, um, being a tier one provider alongside other sources like SQL Server, um, Parallel Data Warehouse, Oracle DB2, and those types of things. And so I wanted to show in this particular demo an approach um, that that we're starting to to really see take a uh, take hold in some of our accounts. This option of using SAP NetWeaver Gateway to serve as a conduit between data that's locked in SAP and our Microsoft BI tools. And for those of us that aren't SAP experts, for all intents and purposes, this Gateway product, which I think debuted in 2011, by all means, I am no SAP expert. Um, full disclosure up front. But the the general purpose seems to be with SAP NetWeaver Gateway is to take data in whatever form it sits today, whether it be the raw ECC database, an ABA program, an RFC call, um, a component of a of a BW implementation, to be able to to expose the contents through the protocol of of OData. So to expose those types and flavors of data, anything in SAP as an O data feed. And then of course, in our world, in, in the world of Microsoft Power BI, whether I'm using a tool like Power Pivot, or I'm using some newer things in the arsenal like Power Query, and we'll show and kind of compare and contrast the approaches here. What you're not gonna see out of this approach is some net new stub in the ribbon that says, oh, I'm gonna go at some SAP data. Our, our conduit is really this OData feed. That OData feed is going to talk to SAP NetWeaver Gateway, which in turn will go back to wherever in SAP the service in SAP was designated, pull the data and expose it out to, um, to our BI tool set. What's interesting about Gateway is that it also supports read-write types of scenarios. So if you have some sort of custom development or mobile application being one of the one of the cooler use cases for that technology. Um, that is available to you as well. For those of us that are concerned with BI workloads, oftentimes it's just the, the read-only stuff that we're really interested in. And so, and so SAP does a really good job of providing a lot of documentation on the topic of, of NetWeaver Gateway. You'll see all sorts of resources at the URL that you see, you just punch in a Bing, uh, Bing search and you type in SAP NetWeaver Gateway and you'll get an array of different materials that are that are available to you. And, and ultimately what you can do is you can also sign up for a test drive of NetWeaver Gateway among other SAP sources. Um, you don't have to give away too much of your personal information, you quickly sign up and you'll get some some test credentials sent back to your email address pretty rapidly and ultimately you'll get to um, a site where you can run web GUI and get into all the various apps of a of a of a test site that SAP provisions for folks like us that want to do some development and training and testing and educational types of, of exercises. And you can see in my particular use case or my particular implementation, I don't have any services built out in my in my uh, in my gateway area just yet. In a future demo, I'm going to try to uh, actually go soup to nuts and build out the entire service, peek into some data in BW, expose that as a service as a no data feed, and then wire up the Power BI tools. What I'm going to do for the purposes of this demo, though, is I'd like to call out Paul Ashman from SAP, who wrote an excellent article on the topic of kind of what we're talking about here right now, which is wiring up Microsoft 
uh, Power BI toolset to SAP NetWeaver Gateway. And so he he wrote up um, an article prior to um, prior I think to the announcement around Power BI. So he's pretty much focused on Power Pivot and Power View. So what he's done as part of this, in, in conjunction with one of his colleagues, he built out this this O data feed, and that O data feed it's like typical sales order header order detail type of of information, nothing uh, earth shattering in terms of subject matter area. It's stuff that we all know and love. If you're a Microsoft person, it looks and feels a whole lot like AdventureWorks kinds of kind of data. And so what we want to do here is we want to to wire this into into Microsoft BI tools and the process is pretty simple now in in Paul's article I think he's using um, he, he's going directly into uh, in Excel 2013 and he's pulling directly against the feed what I'm doing in my case I'm going to show you a couple of different approaches so I'm in I'm going to go into the power pivot window click on the ma manage button I'm assuming that a lot of you, if you're watching this video, you're at least casually familiar with some of the concepts around Power Pivot and Power Query and whatnot. And so in order to, to wire up Power Pivot to that feed that um, Paul and his team had put together for folks that are in our position, um, just for us to get started, what we want to do in Power Pivot is we want to say, wire this up to another feed so we're not going to a traditional source as we said a couple of moments ago don't expect in this list with the out of the box tools to see some magical sap adopter that hooks you into an info cube or to an rfc call or anything like that we're doing it all through the proxy of of a feed and when i click on the next button there what we're going to do is we're going to start to fill out the details of of the the URL that's that's being asked of here. And so what I'm going to do is just copy and paste that URL and we're going to bring it back over into Power Pivot. Now at this point, what we also have to do is we have to configure some of the credentials. And as I mentioned um, a couple of moments ago, you can uh, use some of the resources that SAP provides you, I believe it's on this page, to get a, a test account. And SAP will will email you a, a user ID, a temporary password. You'll be forced to change the password after you log in the first time. But for all intents and purposes, that's what you're going. You have to go through the advanced properties here. You're going to want to flip the flag for integrated security to basic for this particular use case. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy and paste in the uh, the credentials that I have on another monitor, my super secret test credentials here. And when I go and I test the connection, I might spin here for a second as it pings a, uh, a server in the uh, in the great beyond. And hopefully it'll tell me that the uh, connection has succeeded, and which is very good. And we click on the next button. And this is, if you're familiar with Power Pivot, of course, at this stage of the game, I'm going to expect Power Pivot to show me all of the columns that are going to come out of the query or the feed in this case. Um, so I can click on the preview and filter button. It'll bring back the first um, few dozen rows that the uh, the feed sees. So you can see the little bit of the dialogue that's going on in my other monitor here, getting the metadata, which is something you don't always see with uh, relational database tables and text files that you might be bringing into your model. But this the screen that's coming up that's it's doing the initial pull here. You're probably familiar with this dialogue. What columns do I want? Which columns don't I want? Which rows do I want to filter on? And you probably know this dialogue already. So nothing dramatically different here. But I do want to call out that the last column that you see here is this created by BP column. Not that there's anything significant about that yet until I show you uh, the approach to pulling the same feed into Power BI using Power Query because there's more stuff in this feed than Power, Power Pivot is showing. And we're going to prove that out in a moment here. So I'll cancel out. I'm going to assume that many of you know how Power Pivot works already. So I'll kind of, kind of exit from this. And I do want to show you back in Power Query. So 
hopefully you may have the latest and greatest um, edition of Power Query and the add-in running on your machine. If you don't, it's freely available. Do a Bing search, type in Microsoft Power Query. The the first the top link in the uh, in the search results will take you to the um, a place where you can download a copy of the add-in. And so here, if you know anything about Power Query and how it's a little bit different from from Power Pivot, we think about Power Query doing some ETL types of things prior to doing um, business data modeling in Power Pivot. So in cases where we need to um, go against non-traditional sources of data, when we need to look at data that's been highly pivoted, um, in cases where we're scraping data off a website, in cases where it's just not so much of a cut and dry pulling data from, from tables and SQL queries and such, this Power Query has a lot of benefit for our, for our audiences. And so in this case, you also see an adopter for an OData feed. And when I click on this guy, we're going to go and we're going to punch in same sort of stuff. That's my user ID. We don't need that at the moment. What we do need is Paul's URL for his feed. I don't know if we need impressions from the worldwide Microsoft Partner Conference, but what we do need is his feed. <laughs> Sorry, we're doing this demo at 1.30 in the morning, so apologies if I'm rambling a little bit here. Hopefully you get my folksy behavior. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy and paste the URL for Paul's feed into Power Query. It's going to be similar types of questions that are posed to us here. Um, if we haven't, in the past, I've, I've used this feed, so it already had the um, user ID and password. Um, established in Power Query, so it didn't ask me this time. Uh, but I bring this up here, and let me resize this so you can see what's going on. And if you know anything about Power Query, this is sort of your your home screen. This is where I could start splitting columns and deduplicating columns and doing all sorts of fun manipulations with the data. Uh, where this gets interesting, and the only reason I wanted to show you Power Query as an option here, and perhaps in a feed based on this sales order header detail kinds of things that Paul's constructed for us. In that feed, it's not just a, it's not a flat kind of thing. If I scroll over to the right hand side of this guy, you're going to see some extra columns in particular, this guy here called line items and business partner. And so if you know anything about how, databases get normalized if you go to college and you learn about order detail types of um, breakouts of tables to achieve third normal form um, that's how order detail data tends to work so in this case each one of the rows represents an order header but there's this nested entry here for a table object and if i click on the hyperlink for a table it'll go down and it'll show me for that line for that order header all the line items that appeared on that receipt which is pretty interesting um, but we don't want just the data for that one guy we want them for for all of that so in the interest of flattening things out trying to come up with a common fact table if you want to think about it in, in that context or even on this um, other guy here called business partner and if you see the contents of this this is this is not such a a drill down of of a one-to-many relationship here but it's sort of like an object that lives within the context of this feed and there's all sorts of of, uh, of attributes associated with this guy called a, a business partner and so perhaps what I want to do is I want to take some of these attributes or if I wanted to expand all the detail these these are the kinds of use cases that we're finding may be appropriate for um, for power query and so one of the options that, that Power Query gives you is the ability to expand things. So if I click on this little icon over here, I'm not even sure what to call that thing, but I have a list of, of attributes that are associated with business partner. When I click on OK, you'll notice that I get a whole bunch of net new additional columns. I didn't really change the density of this table per se, but for sure, I, I added to the breadth of it. Now, obviously, if I come over here and I expand what's in line items, you would suspect that the, the row density for this feed will get much greater. Um, let's take a look and see what it looks like. 
So when I click on this, you'll see perhaps the scroll bar um, for the vertical side of things in Power Query start to change here a little bit, just to denote that um, we're looking not just at order header data, but we're also looking at order detail table. And if you know anything about Power Query, this is in a in a broader workflow. You think about doing these Power Query types of tasks before you get to load data into a Power Pivot model. Some of the, the staging kinds of things and the manip manipulative types of things that you do prior to pushing data into a Power Pivot model. And so sort of the, the flattening of, of things may be a good use case for taking some of that SAP data and running it through the breadth of the Power BI story. So that's that's kind of what I wanted to show you here with this, this quick demo. Um, I didn't show you much in terms of the SAP side of the house. I encourage you in my blog post, which I'll have available on YouTube as well as my blog, um, some of the additional details and resources around this type of this type of approach to pulling in data from SAP. Um, SAP advertises this as being uh, suitable for for lightweight types of BI exercises. In fact, they're using this technology for some of their their own mobile BI applications, and we get the benefit as a third party in that context, being able to tap into that same resource, and so. And so you wouldn't suspect that this is just a tool that's going to look at 100 rows at a time, right? But you're probably not pulling in um, 100 billion rows at a time through an OData feed. The truth is somewhere in between those extremes in a lot of use cases. So lightweight, of course, is a variable term. It's going to depend on... Uh, it's going to depend on how many columns that you're bringing across, what's the size of the wire between the source and the destination, and a number of other con considerations that aren't unique to, to anything that we're talking about here today. But for these types of lightweight BI exercises, certainly in the cases where we're looking at doing some prospecting and prototyping and, and very ad hoc ways in which we want to take SAP data and non-SAP data and glue it together, the premise of using SAP NetWeaver Gateway and exposing data to our tools, our Microsoft tools via OData feeds is a direction that's rather promising. So I encourage um, all of our customers and partners to, to check out that strategy in addition to some of our enterprise grade strategies around SAP and Microsoft BI interoperability. Thanks for carving out a little bit of time to hang, with, to hang out with me. Hope you have a great day. Thanks.